Hi, my name is Patrick Plourd. I'm Creative Director at Ubisoft Montreal and you're watching Eurogamer. Hey ho Gamerinos, I'm Eurogamer's YouTube editor Ian Higton and I recently got a hands-on with the first couple of hours of Ubisoft's upcoming UbiArt framework powered JRPG inspired game Child of Light. While I was there I recorded all this brand new gameplay for you to feast your eyes on and I spoke to Patrick Plurd from Ubisoft and asked him to spill the beans on some of the game's mechanics. Also stay tuned right up until the end of the video to find out my opinions on the game based on my time with it. So first up Patrick, an overview on Child of Light if you please. Child of Light is a you know, 2D turn-based RPG console style uh, but it has a unique watercolor art style so basically you feel like you're playing on a, on a painting. Uh, it's all written in verse so it really gives that sense of the, the, the playable poem. Really unique style for Ubisoft. The main player character Aurora is also joined by a floating firefly stroke spirit guide called Igniculus. How do these two work together in the game? Aurora, she, she can you know, fly around and she, but she's limited with uh, you know, collision so every time that, you know, there's a wall she can go across but she can, she can move pretty much everywhere. Igniculus, uh, if he's over an enemy he's not going to trigger a fight, he can go through any collision, any wall, anywhere on screen but he's stuck with the screen of the main character so you can use him to either and he's a, he's a little ball of light so you can use him to act like a flashlight in pitch black area you can use those secrets that are hidden behind walls uh, activated switch so uh, you know uh, things like that then in fight Aurora and the, the player controlling Aurora and the partner, he, he controls all the menus, so if I'm selecting a potion or a, a spell. And then the second character is he, he's still a, a free, uh, kind of a free-flowing uh, character. He can go anywhere on screen, and then if he's, he's blinding the enemy, then he slows their bar. So, you know, that opens up the like, strategy on who to slow when. Uh, if he goes on the partners, or you can heal them, so uh, it's really simple, but at the same time, it, it really affects the strategy. So if, if you're playing solo, you're constantly using that character, but if you play co-op, then the second character is extremely useful, both in exploration and in fighting. The combat in the game is heavily inspired by JRPG turn-based combat and has a unique twist in regards to wait time. Can you explain how it works and why you chose this method? Basically, well, it, it used like the uh, active time uh, battle system, a little bit like you know Final Fantasy. So basically, uh, there's a waiting time per character, and at the end of the waiting time, you select an action. In our case, uh, there's a casting part in that bar, so basically every action has a casting time, strong action has a longer casting time. And the twist is, if you get attacked there while casting, uh, you lose your turn, so you're interrupted. So then you have to uh, kind of juggle in your mind, am I going to use a strong attack, but that takes a lot of time to, to cast? Uh, am, I going, uh, am I going to have enough time to launch that attack, or should I uh, use a quick attack and try to interrupt an enemy? So. Um, with that system, you're basically forcing every turn to make uh, a decision based on the current uh, situation. It makes like an addictive uh, formula for for turn base. It is not necessarily you know repetitive uh, in, in the choice you have to make. Another thing that enhances the combat in Child of Light are elemental attacks. Can you explain how these work? So that means that you know you have to look out for in. So for example. Uh, Fire enemies, the, the, they're you know, weak to water. So it's really simple in terms of how it is. But then after that, you know, you start. This, every one of them, the ghosts, they have, they have a different behavior, different resistance, different action or special action. So then you create a thing that throughout the adventure, there's always something new that you're going to uh, to see. 
During my hands-on with the game, I recruited two party members, Rubella, the healing jester, and Finn, an elemental gnome wizard type thing, out of a total of around eight altogether. What are the benefits of having these party members? So basically, every one of them has their its own uh, style. So you have the time mage, the elemental mage, uh, and they are all have their unique skill tree, There's the, all the skills are never duplicated with uh, any different characters, so really the, the when you start having a full cast of character, that's when the, the system are really rich, and then after that it's a little bit like Final 10 when you can, you can always bring, change your character during a fight, so you have, you have really access to your whole roster uh, on any fight. Some RPGs are open world, others follow a more linear path. What camp would you put Child of Light in? I wouldn't call it open world necessarily, but I think that you know what I wanted to do is to create a game where you want to explore every corner and it would be rewarded to explore every corner of the, of the game. So it's mainly linear, but there's a lot of optional dungeon, optional missions. Uh, basically, any character that you want to have in your party has to you have to complete a side quest for them. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of place and like you know, uh, little secrets spread uh, everywhere in the environment. There is an option for downloadable content in the main menu of Child of Light. Look, there it is right there. What are your plans for future downloadable content? We have the, for example, you look at the uh, the collector's edition pack, so there's going to be different uh, dress for, uh, uh, and one one side characters that you can get the golem, and after that it's a couple of gems or seeds of uh, stardust you can get, but nothing to... Uh, that thing it's really simple so no plans for extra quests or dungeons then currently no but we'll see after that if the you know the, depending on the reception of the game but there's none being developed right now child of light is also coming out on the wii u does the gamepad give you any extra functions or add anything to the gameplay over the normal control method so uh, the second character can be used with the gamepad actually works super smooth it's, you know, that and uh, I think remote play on PS4 would be like the two version that are the smoothest because you, you don't need necessarily to use the, the second stick for controlling. So basically in fight you tap and the, the character goes straight where you tap, you can start collecting things super seamlessly. And the game just looks gorgeous on Wii U, so you can play it off TV. Actually the last walkthrough I made was at home on remote play on my Vita and it looks gorgeous. So. Uh, people that have that set up, I mean, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a treat for them. Thanks, Patrick. Child of Light is coming out at the end of this month, and it's looking like something pretty special for fans of the RPG genre. I can especially see fans of Nino Cooney enjoying not only the gameplay but also the art style and overall presentation. For me, someone who grew up firmly in the Western gaming camp, however, the first two hours of the game that I played felt a bit too slow and a little bit empty of memorable experiences. The fairy tale story is charming and unique, but it struggles to hold my attention span and after I found out you could easily skip most monster encounters by blinding them with igniculus and then flying past, I ignored most of the optional combat and spent the majority of my time just searching for secret items instead, which most definitely is a bad idea if you want to level up your characters, but it's a good idea if you found the combat boring, like I did. In my opinion, there is a great game in there, but it's a great game that only a niche audience will find. The rest of us may find it hard to shine some light on the entertainment trapped within. Thanks for watching this preview of Child of Light. If you want more exclusive interviews, early gameplay previews and much, much more, then please do subscribe to Eurogamer by clicking on that on-screen annotation. It'll light up your life. <laughs> Lols. Bye.